welcome back. You're watching Overdrive. The Maruti Suzuki Invicto and the Toyota Innova High Cross are as similar as two cars can get. So where does the difference lie and which car should you put your money on? Let's find out. We've driven the Toyota Innova High Cross quite a few times now and in a wide range of situations, it's proved every bit worthy of the Innova name. But could its biggest challenge be coming from within the fold? The Maruti Suzuki Invicto promises everything to do that the Innova can, but with the added assurance of the country's largest car maker behind it. So is there more to it than just the branding? An SUV like Big Grill and High Bonnet are what buyers want in their three-row cars these days, and the Toyota Innova High Cross does enough to stand out on the road with this. But look at the two MPVs together and Maruti Suzuki seems to have pulled one off here. The Invicto catches your eye first with its bolder grille treatment. It's not gaudy but fits in just right with the twin chrome bands extending into the shared lighting. The more intricate detailing of the grille also works with this and we also think that the three-segment Nexa light signature stands out more than the simple DRLs in the High Cross. But you lose out on fog lamps in the Maruti and the Toyota does reclaim some ground with its more aggressive detailing in the bumper. Both MPVs carry on with the SUV inspiration in profile with the sculpted bodywork and the sleeker glass area and roof line. But you get 18-inch wheels with the Hycross in its top trims, giving the car a more proportioned look. The Invicto again is flashier with its dual-tone alloy design, but these don't quite fill the wheel wells as effectively. You have the three-segmented look from the front repeated again at the rear of the Invicto, while the Innova again seems to go for a more familiar theme with the horizontal lighting. You get a functional boot in both though, there's space for a couple of overnighters with all rows up, but the load lip is low and the space is wide and flat when the third row is folded down. Now it's evident that the basic layout of the dash is identical in the two cars here, but we think the Toyota does it a bit better, the tan sort of contrasting this all-black look in the Invicto and giving it that slightly more upmarket feel, that slightly more premium feel. But that being said, the level of quality that you get here is really quite nice for the price that you pay for these cars. For example, these materials are more or less soft. The plastic is that typically hard-wearing, almost industrial feel that you get from a Toyota feels like it'll last forever. Same with the panels here and even the door cards. So overall, it's very well made. But the thing that we really like, which we keep coming back to whenever we drive one of these cars, is the way the central panel is laid out. It's... The part digital instrumentation is easy to navigate and has a bright display, while good thought has been given to practicality too. It's a welcome change from the norm to see hard buttons for most functions. The dash-mounted gear selector falls to hand easily, especially during U-turns, and there are deep storage bins all around. You also have both Type A and C charge ports. That said, the 10.1-inch touchscreen system leaves quite a bit to be desired. It feels dated with its bleak display that catches glare easily and limited functions. You only have wireless connectivity for Apple CarPlay, but the Invicto compounds this less-than-ideal experience with its six-speaker audio system. The JBL-branded nine-speaker unit in the Toyota does better, but is still not as nice as competitors. Now, one of the main reasons why you might prefer the Innova High Cross over the Invicto is for the second row, where the two cars really do differentiate themselves. Not by much, but it's a noticeable difference. To start with, of course, you know that the space here and the adjustability, the amount of space that you can carve out for yourself is great. As you can see, there's a big degree of adjustment available to you. And like earlier, the battery pack sort of always gets in your way when you want to say, if you are especially tall and you want to rest your feet, it's a bit of a hassle finding a place to do that. But other than that, the large windows, the big panoramic sunroof, this sunshade, which by itself is a great feature for our conditions, really just makes a really comforting place to spend time in. And now coming to the amenities that you have here, again, there's a sizable amount of it. You have this armrest and of course, these are the Innova's party tricks, so to speak. The powered seat back adjustment, which works well if a bit slowly. But yeah, what will really get people talking is these Ottomans, these powered Ottomans. And yeah, while they do help you with that, you know, lifting your feet up and they generally are quite comfortable, they also seem to add to the under thigh support that is there. So there's a noticeable difference in that aspect because of these protruding sort of squabs. 
So in that respect, if you want comfort, then this is the place for you. The top Maruti Suzuki Invicto Alpha Plus seen here is effectively placed between the Hycross's VX, O and ZX variants. So both get a fairly long list of features as seen here. In terms of safety, the Innova has a significant edge with its level 2 ADAS functions that work well enough in our conditions. Safety features available on both include TPMS 360 degree cameras, front and rear parking sensors, hill hold and an electronic parking brake. Now you don't get the fancy powered adjustment for the second row in the Invicto but that actually makes life easier for the third row passengers because all you need to do is pull this one lever and the seat tilts and slides forward and then it's pretty easy for you to just step in and fit yourself into the back seat of the Invicto. Now compared to how it is in the Innova, you do feel a bit more hemmed in again because of this darker colour scheme. But otherwise, all the positives that we've said so far of the Innova earlier in our earlier reviews holds true here. Coming to the comfort here, which is always a big talking point, you do feel a decent amount of under thigh support as much as you can expect in a third row. So while it's not great as much, nowhere close to what it'd be in the front two rows, it's still comfortable. You can do a reasonably long journey here, even if you're an adult. <laughs> The hybrid system is identical in both and seems to function as such. There is a 2-litre Atkinson cycle petrol motor that puts out 154 PS and 190 Nm paired with a 113 PS and 206 Nm electric motor. With an eCVT in the mix for a combined 186 PS. You usually start in electric power but the petrol motor fires up quickly enough once you start picking up speed. Here, the electric motor and engine work cohesively to keep moving you along. The system does a commendable job of optimizing both powertrains to not make the whole thing feel unnatural. The CVT does well enough to meld the two outputs together, especially with the torque from the e-motor filling in here. Still, there's not quite the immediacy you want when you're looking to make up speed during an overtake in comparison to a torquey diesel as our rolling acceleration times show. There is a power mode and a sport mode for the gearbox that does amp up the sense of urgency notably, making these MPVs brisk and outright acceleration. With the Hycross running a slightly larger, wider tyre, you notice that this one, on a winding stretch of road like this, handles a touch better. So you feel a bit more connected to the car with the steering. The steering feels a touch more direct. Especially if you're going a bit quicker, it seems to turn a bit easier, especially as you pick up speed. But there is a flip side to it. For example, over a rough patch, like we've encountered a few on our shoot today, the Maruti does a better job of ironing out, say, a rough surface or maybe even a few small potholes. So it just smoothens it out a touch more. Broadly speaking, in terms of how these two cars ride and handle, they're really quite good for being such large seven-seater cars. They are broadly pretty decent. So even the Innova, for example, generally in isolation is a pretty pliant car. We also put the two MPVs through a real-world fuel efficiency test and no surprise, the two cars were close to each other. The differences you see are probably down to driving styles and charge levels in the hybrid system's battery. This can affect mileage notably as our earlier experience suggests, but on this occasion that wasn't the case. The Toyota Innova Hycross and its top ZX-O variant seen here is priced at Rs 36.56 lakh on-road, while the Maruti Suzuki Invicto Alpha Plus costs Rs 33.40 lakh on-road. We think these two cars are too similar to go wrong with either. The hybrid powertrain build and cabin layout are strong points in both. The Maruti Suzuki grabs more attention and is more comfortable, but the Toyota justifies its added price convincingly with an overall more premium experience in the cabin that the added features and color choices bring. If you're looking for an adventure on wheels, but in the luxury confines of your home, then don't worry because JCBL RV has it covered for you with the signature RV. Stay with us, you're watching Overdrive.